Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm actually going to go over two miniatures, uh, mostly because I think these two are quite closely related, and it's a little easier than doing it in two separate videos. So I'm going to do American Civil War Infantry, both Confederate and Union. Now I've had the opportunity once to actually visit Richmond, Virginia, which was the capital of the Confederacy, and I had the opportunity to go around and see a lot of the sites, the museums and what have you, and I gotta tell you, it was fascinating. Now the miniatures I'm painting today, these are from the American Civil War set from Perry Miniatures. Uh, they reckon that they are a generic set and that they can be used as either Union or Confederate troops, but having a look at the contents of the box, I would suggest they're probably going to be better for sort of mid to late war Confederates. Um, if you are looking at doing one specific army, you better to go and plump for the box that has, you know, Union or Confederate written on it. Uh, now I'm going to use paints from a lot of different manufacturers today, so I'll link all of those, so I'll name all of those in the description below. Let's get started. Now funnily enough, we're actually going to start by priming both of these guys in uniform grey from the Army Painter. Uh, you can use any mid-tone grey for this, it really doesn't matter where you get it from, but it is going to provide the basis of the uniform for our Confederate soldier. So because he's going to be the quicker one to paint, we'll start with him. We'll put this fella over to the side for now. Now as the war would progress, you'd start seeing Confederate soldiers in a mix of grey and sort of homespun uh, clothing. Look up Butternut. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one to sort of investigate. But any light brown is going to do the job. So I've got Monster Brown here, and I'm going to apply this to his trousers. I could just as easily put it on his jacket. Uh, to be fair, I'll probably paint his hat in this too. And all you want is just to give this a couple of quick coats. Uh, it's not terribly taxing this stage. What I'd suggest is if you're painting, say, 10 blokes at a time, what you do is you put, you know, 10 of them out, then you take two off one end and two off the other. And you paint two of those guys with brown trousers and two of those guys with brown jackets and the rest you just leave gray. Then when you finish painting them, you mix them all up again and you've got a nice varied unit. So you'll see there is a little bit of the gray showing through on this, but that's not a problem. We'll come back once this first coat of Monster Brown is dry and give it a second. Now once that's dried, we can get on and paint his skin. And I'm going to use tanned flesh for this. Uh, this is just going to be the base coat we're using. When you're applying this, you don't have to be terribly careful. Just make sure you're not hitting really the jacket. Things like his rifle, for example, or his musket rather, that we're going to be painting later. Or is it a rifle at this stage? Hmm. You know, I can never remember. <laughs> it's probably important information, that. But all we're going to do is, first of all, one coat. And you can see that slight grey translucency showing through. But once this one is dried, we'll go ahead and just add a second over the top. When it comes to where his hair and such is, just paint straight over the top of it because we can paint his hair in a different color later. Now we'll go on and I've got fur brown, which might seem like an odd choice of color, but I promise it's the good stuff. And we're going to go ahead and just cover over his whole rifle with a couple of coats of this. Now I've got here two browns. I've got leather brown and dirt spatter. These are both quite nice sort of dark leather colors. What I'm going to do is because again, we're looking at sort of a a lack of uniformity. So things like his magazine pouch, uh, his straps across his shoulders, the strap on his weapon, for example, they're all going to be different shades of leather. Uh, in reality, some of them may even have been black, and that's up to you to decide how you want to paint those. But what I'm going to do is just some of them dirt spatter, some of them leather brown, and again, you could mix that up on different miniatures. So let's come back, just have a quick look at what that looks like. You can see the darker dirt spatter I've used on his shoes and his uh, magazine, sorry, his cartridge case. And I've used a leather brown on the other side. And I've also painted his hair in with the leather brown at the same time. What we need now, I've got a little bit of black. And it's a little difficult to get to with the camera in the way. <laughs> we go ahead and paint in his uh, bayonet sheath. 
and his belt and any remaining cartridge boxes there. I'm probably going to need a smaller brush. Now the cover on his water bottle, you can just leave that grey if you'd like, but I think it does pay to add a little bit more colour there. So I've got this here is wolf brown, uh, sorry, wolf grey. It's a nice grey blue colour, and we'll just dab that in. Now obviously, some of these guys are going to have more prominent water bottles than others. <laughs> now for the metal work on them, we're actually going to step outside of the army painter range, and I've got this is Iron Hand Steel from Citadel. Now, unfortunately, on these particular metal mini uh, plastic miniatures. The detail on the rifles is not terribly well cast, uh, so you're going to have to take your time and just pick out any metal work, kind of making it up in some areas. Um, it will not be terribly difficult to find you know, reference images online. At the same time, anything that's going to be brass later, just dab it with a little bit of the silver now. It'll help with that color later. And then finally, we'll use just a tiny wee dot of greedy gold, just to dab in those brass details. So don't forget, bottom of his bayonet sheath. Now with all of our base coats applied, it's time for his shade. So I'm going to do one, two drops of strong tone. And then, because that will be quite strong, funnily enough, if we apply it straight up like that, let's add one, come on, one, there we go, drop of the quick shade mixing medium. Let's mix those together. So load up your brush, and I tend to find it helps if you start from near the top and work your way down. Just start applying this all over the miniature, making sure that with your brush, you do work it into any recesses, and then you're going to give it about 30-40 minutes to dry. Now once that's dried, that's quite effective. That's nice and quick, and honestly, if you're looking at turning out masses of infantry very quickly, I think you're on to a winner. What we'll do now is a couple of highlights. This is really if you just want to spend the time on them, and what I'm going to show you these are quite uh, garish up close, but once you put them on a the table, these are going to look really good. I've got here, this is ash grey. And all we're going to do is pick out some edges, like on his jacket, uh, at the edge of his shoulders here. Cuffs are another good spot for this. All we'll do is just paint on a few sharp lines. And that gives us a little more definition on his jacket. So you see around the back as well, we've been quite, you know, quite bold with those. They're very sharp, but at table distance, they're going to look the business. Now I've got Banshee Brown, and we'll do just a few of the same on his trousers and his hat. And then finally, we'll do the same thing on his skin using Barbarian Flesh. And for this, I'd say... Just a few little dots to accentuate some of the shape of his face. Maybe the back of his hands too. Now you could go to town and highlight everything, but I don't think you're going to need to. Uh, particularly when it comes to things like his equipment, they're not really the focus of the miniature himself. Once these guys are on the table, what you want to be able to see is what they are at a distance, and I think these highlights will do the job for that. So let's move on to our Union Soldier. Now when I was painting the skin on our other fella, I did start off with this chap, gave him a quick coat of the uh, tanned flesh. What I'm going to start with here though is actually a Citadel colour. This is Cantor Blue, and you can see this going on. Oh, how nice this is. Now luckily, because this fella's going to have mostly black equipment, we don't need to worry too much about being careful where his straps and things are. Just go ahead, cover over all of his jacket, and you'll probably find you can do that in one quick coat. And then we're going to move back to an army painter paint. I've got here, this is electric blue. And we're going to go over his trousers, and you'll see we're getting that same slight translucency showing through. Now we are applying quite a bright color. So we'll give 
one quick coat of this. Let this dry and then we can give it a second coat just to solidify that color. And when it comes to his equipment, we're actually quite lucky that there was some uniformity here in the case of the Union soldiers. I've got here, this is a Vallejo color. This is black gray. Uh, you could simply use black, but I would suggest with dark leather like this, you want just a little bit, you know, that you can sort of come down from. So all I'm going to do is go around and fill in pretty much all of his equipment in black gray. Uh, it is worth pointing out that there were some examples of like a very dark brown, uh, particularly for shoulder straps. So you might choose instead something like uh, German camo dark brown would be a good example if we're going for another Vallejo color. Uh, but whatever the case, I think, you know, when we're looking at the fastest possible way to do this, just stick to the uniform and we'll use black gray over all of this. Oops. Probably helps if I hold it in the right spot. The camera's all over the show today. <laughs> uh, what I'd suggest is some flat black, just to fill in the same as the other fella, his bayonet sheath. Uh, the cap on his cappy here. Obviously take your time when you're coming close to the skin with this one. And I'm going to fill in his boots with black as well. You could just as easily do these in black gray or dark brown. It doesn't really matter. Now, same as with our Confederate soldier, we can use a little bit of wolf gray just to fill in the cover on his water bottle. Now, this stage is not purely necessary. Uh, you can leave this strap in black, but I think it does add quite a bit if you take some white carefully paint in this white strap on his water bottle. Unfortunately, on these Perry miniatures, it's a little difficult to see in some places, so take your time. And if you're not convinced, you know, don't do it. But I'm going to do it because I think it does add a bit to the miniature. Makes these guys stand out pretty cool on the tabletop. Now, if you do make any mistake, you can just go back to your base coat and tidy it up over the top of the white. Doesn't take long to fix that up at all. Now this is flat brown from Vallejo, and I'm just using this so that you can see what you know a different option would be. Uh, personally, I do kind of prefer the flat brown, uh, but that is largely a matter of personal taste. So same as the last weapon, we are filling in just the whole thing in brown because it will be easier to pick out any details in silver later. Uh, on this fella here, you can see that we can actually see the uh, the leather strap that's attached to his weapon here. So we'll leave that and come back to that to paint that later. Now while that's drying, I'm just going to use beige brown and just paint in his hair carefully. I might use a smaller brush actually, but for these big bits that won't matter too much. And we'll use a little bit of mahogany brown, and this is going to just be to paint in the leather detail on his weapon strap. It'll be easier if I come at it from this angle. Then we'll get out our iron hand steel again, and any metal details, funnily enough. And then finally, just a wee bit of greedy gold for those brass details. We'll probably not need very much of this at all. Now I've mixed up my shade in the same way that I did for our Confederate soldier, except instead of using strong tone, we're going to use dark tone in this one. So the mix is all the same, and we're going to do the same thing. Just go over the whole miniature, making sure to work it into those recesses, and shade our model in our black mix. Now you'll see, same as our Confederate soldier, this Union fella, once his shade is dried, Goodness, that makes a difference. And I think you could, again, quite happily just base them up and put them on the table. But let's go a little step further. I've got here some Griffin Blue. Uh, this is actually probably my favorite color recently. I love this blue. What we'll do is just a couple of little highlights. As soon as I get the bloody camera in the right position. And you want to be, again, fairly sparing with this. 
So just find a couple of areas where you want to sharpen up some of the detail. And then using Ice Storm, which is always a fun one to try and pronounce very clearly. Uh, let's go ahead, get some of that off my brush, and highlight his trousers with this stuff. If you're worried that you've gone overboard on some of your highlights, you can get your electric blue again and just thin some of them out. And this will work for pretty much whatever you're painting, honestly. If you have this problem of just two thick highlights or a highlight not in quite the right place, go back to that mid-tone again and you can generally touch them up. Then with a little bit of Barbarian Flesh, the same as we did our Confederate Soldier, there he is, finished. And speaking of our Confederate chappy, there they are side by side. So as you can see, that's quite quick and simple. What I'm going to do now is throw a base on both of them, and we'll get a look at what they look like when they're actually finished, and sort of in context with their surroundings. Now at last with their bases applied, and a quick varnish given to seal the miniatures, you can see what they look like. And I think a little bit of distance here, and you get the better impression of what they're going to look like on the table. So, as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who've helped make this video possible, including producers Jonathan Harris, Ben Hicks, Alan Nuttall, Boson, and Kyrie Crawford. Any questions or anything, guys, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time. Can I get that in shot? Yeah! <laughs> and you all enjoy the rest of your day.